Hi, it's Dinosaur George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering your emails. We've got a lot this time, so let's move kind of quick. Uh, Anthony from Buffalo, New York wrote and said, Did Angotorama have any larger or more fierce predators or enemies that could fatally hurt or kill it besides another Angotorama? Angotorama is a member of the Spinosaur family. It was discovered in Brazil. It's an extremely rare dinosaur with practically uh, the only bones found were I think part of the skull. So we don't know very much about this dinosaur at all and that makes it difficult to determine who or what it would have competed with. My best guess would be that uh, it definitely had things that it had to contend with. I just don't know enough about the Brazilian dinosaurs to really give you a clear idea. I wish I could answer the question better than that, Anthony, but uh, uh, one thing I want to tell you about Buffalo, New York, your hometown, that's the coldest place I've ever been in my entire life. I stepped off of an airplane there and nearly froze to death just in the, uh, in the terminal. So, man, do I have uh, respect for you guys and your ability to deal with the cold weather, because here in Texas, we don't have that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, my little friend Kayuki from Bernie, Texas. First, let me tell you something, honey. I got the card you sent me. It was absolutely the neatest thing I've ever read. It was so nice of you to send that to me. I love the little origami triceratops you put on the front. Thank you so much, sweetie, for sending that to me. I love you very much, and thanks for sending it to me. Okay, here's what she asked. Did any meat eaters like T-Rex eat plants as well, or did they only eat meat? I'll tell you something that most people don't realize. Predators, all predatory animals, ultimately eat plants. Now, they don't go out and graze like a plant eater does, but when they make a kill, they notoriously eat what's inside the stomach of who they killed. So in other words, a lion may kill a wildebeest in Africa, but the lion will eat the grass that's inside. See, animals that only eat meat, they don't have the right kind of bacteria that break down plant material. But inside the stomachs of the plant eaters, that bacteria is there. So the bacteria breaks it down for the plant eaters. So predators eat the plant material that's already sort of decomposed. Um, vegetables are good for you. No matter who you are, they're very good for you. And so uh, meat-eating dinosaurs would have eaten the plants inside the stomach of their prey. So in all honesty, all meat eaters, in my opinion, ate plants. But again, they didn't go out and chew the leaves off the tree because they couldn't digest it. So, uh, so there's your answer. Okay, Robbie from Springfield, Virginia. Why did Therizinosaurus have those long claws? Well, that's a mystery. Uh, in one of my newsletters, and if you don't get my newsletter, go to DinosaurGeorge.com, go to the free newsletter, sign up for it. It's free. It's really cool. In one of the newsletters, I wrote an article recently about Therizinosaurus and about this very question. I don't know the answer to your question. I don't know why its claws were so long. Most paleontologists will tell you that it was a plant-eating dinosaur and it used those claws to defend itself and to bring plants down from high in the trees further to its mouth. But I disagree with that. I, I'm not sold on that. I personally believe, by looking at the shape of those claws, I believe that Therizinosaurus was using them to kill prey. I think he was a predator or perhaps an omnivore. Uh, I may be wrong, but I just don't think that dinosaur is a plant-eating dinosaur. Just, I don't. So I think those claws are being used to actually kill prey. Uh, he also asked, do you know about Carnotaurus? Why does it have horns above its eyes? Um, look at this Carnotaurus and you'll see the horns. They're not used for combat, I don't think. Um, I think they were used to help it identify other members of its same family. I think the horns could have been used for fighting between males, maybe for headbutting or something, but he wasn't using them. He wasn't lowering his head and chasing things down and ramming them with them. Uh, there's another dinosaur, Ceratosaurus, that also has these odd-looking horns on its head. Again, I believe that they were used uh, to identify the bigger the horn, the older you were. So if you look across an open meadow and you see an animal standing in silhouette, you see those horns, number one, you know if it's a member of your own family or not. But more importantly, it tells you whether or not you should be messing with that thing because if his horns are bigger, chances are he's older, he's bigger, he's smarter, and he can take you on in a fight. 
So uh, look at antelope from Africa. They have all these different weird looking horns. That's to help them understand who is who from a distance and that's why I think he had them. Uh, Jay from Maidenville, Jamaica. Never been to Jamaica, Jay, but I'd love to come. Um, what dinosaur book has a Tarchia in it? Tarchia is, a, is an ankylosaur from Asia, I believe. Uh, he's a real cool looking dinosaur. That dinosaur is in a lot of books. There's, there's a lot of books. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I can tell you that most good dinosaur books have a reference to this dinosaur. Even though it's relatively rare, he's a cool looking little dude. So I would tell you the best thing to do is to go to the library Look through some of their books, and if you find him in a book that you like there, either continue to check that book out or write down the name of the book, and then go online and find it. There's so many great resources for dinosaur books out there. Jake from Lancaster, England. Um, are you the world's best paleontologist, and would a Spinosaurus beat T-Rex in a fight? Well, the answer to your first question is yes, of course. I am the world's greatest paleontologist. In the history of the world, Okay, I'm making that up. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not even close. Uh, there are so many paleontologists out there that know so much more than I do. Uh, Dr. Tom Holtz, uh, Dr. Phil Curry, Dr. Robert Bacher. Uh, oh, God, the, name, the list just goes on and on and on. Uh, Dr. Lawrence Whitmer, uh, Dr. Larry Martin, uh, Dr. Ken Carpenter. These are people who I believe are the true geniuses, the geniuses in paleontology. And, and Pete Larson, let me name him as well because he's a genius when it comes to T-Rex. Uh, those are the people I think are the world's best but I appreciate even being considered the world's best. But let's talk about Spinosaurus and T-Rex. They lived at two different times in two different places, but let's forget that part. Let's step out of that and let's say they get into a fight. When you size up Tyrannosaurus Rex and you size up Spinosaurus, there is no comparison in my opinion. Tyrannosaurus Rex is like a grizzly bear and Spinosaurus is like a panda bear. And if you meet the two together, the grizzly is going to kill the, the panda. So Spinosaurus would just obliterate the guy. Okay, one more. This is Casey from Temecula, California. Casey, I spent a week in Temecula, California, by the way. Who would win in a fight between a pack of six Deinonychus and the Spinosaurus? Again, two different time zones, um, uh, two different locations. Uh, times are close, but two different locations. One in Africa, one in, in uh, America. Deinonychus here in the U.S. Um, if those animals were to uh, attack, Deinonychus, even though there are six of them, there's just no way they're going to mess with something as big as Spinosaurus. The risk is too great. Um, predators are very careful about who they fight. Predators are very careful about being injured because there's no doctors in the, uh, in the Mesozoic. And if you get injured, you're out of the game and you die. So if you're going to attack somebody, you're certainly not going to attack something as big as a Spinosaurus. Even though Spinosaurus is not really designed for attacking giant animals, you just don't want to mess with him. All right, um, that's it. Uh, if you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Send me an email, uh, fill out the form, and uh, I will absolutely be glad to respond. Uh, thank you so much for writing. Remember, kids, practice your manners, practice your reading, and I promise you, you will be a success. Until the next time, take care.